Here we are ready to assemble this fork. And as with any assembly, or even when you're starting a brand new part, you always have to determine a part or a part of a sketch that's going to act as ground. By default, when I put parts into the assembly, the first part that I put in always gets the fixed constraint. So you can see that denoted here by the F in front of the motorcycle leg. Now the motorcycle leg, to me, doesn't strike me as a part that needs to be fixed. What I want to choose for this is the fork tree, because this is attached to the motorcycle frame, which is as much a grounded part as anything, especially on a device that's main task is to move. So I'm going to unfix the fork leg, and SolidWorks terminology for that is float, so I'll just right click on that part and float it. And now I want to lock the fork tree to the assembly origin. So you can see the part has an origin, and the assembly also has an origin. So I'm going to use the mates. Let's start the mates using the paper clip. And I've already got the assembly origin in here, and that's right here. And I also want to select the origin from the individual part. SolidWorks automatically moves that part over the assembly origin. And I've got the align axes turned on here, which means that in a single mate, it's going to align the X, Y, and Z. And so I'll accept that. That's exactly what I wanted to have happen. Now if I get out of the mate property manager, I can see that this motorcycle treetop part has no minus in front of it. So that means I can't just grab it and move it around. SolidWorks is going to give me the message that says the selected component is fully defined. Any of the rest of these parts should be able to move. So I'm going to take this motorcycle treetop part and move it to the top of the list. Remember that the list of parts in an assembly is not history based. So you can reorder these parts in any order that you want to put them in. It really doesn't matter. So the next thing that needs to get mated is the fork leg. And I'm looking around at the display here and I'm seeing there's some things that I want to get rid of. These planes are showing and one thing I could do is I could go through individually and click on these planes and hide them if I wanted to. But let's just do this through the hide show items list and I can select to turn off the view of all planes. This turns off all of the planes all at once rather than going through the parts individually and turning off individual planes. So that works out well. I can do the same thing for part origins listed over here. So I'm seeing all these blue origins on the screen right now. I don't really need to see those anymore since I've already made it up the part. Okay, so now I want to assemble the fork leg into the tree. I'm going to grab the fork leg and I can move it with my cursor, but I'm going to use this space ball here. I've got a device called a 3D mouse from 3D Connection. This is a device that allows me to move the view, but it also allows me to move individual parts within an assembly if I want to do that. If you've got one of these devices, it's very nice to help you with visualization and seeing your parts in the assembly. So I want to mate some things together. I'm going to click on Mate. Click on the outside cylindrical surface of the fork leg. Click on the inside of the hole. In this case, I got the edge of the hole, and that's okay. I would usually go for a face-to-face -face mate rather than a face-to-edge, but SolidWorks has improved the software, so you can actually use an edge for this sort of mate. Now, if we look at this a little more closely, you can see that I've got a problem here, and this is something we're going to have to come back later and solve. But you can see that the inside edge of the hole in the tree is smaller than the outside diameter of the leg. So this means we have an interference going on. We're going to come back later and have a look at that. So let's click the green check to accept that. Next thing I want to mate is the top surface of the leg to the top face of the tree. I'll hit the right mouse button to accept that. And next, I want to prevent this leg from rotating. One of the things that we should talk about, as long as we're here, is degrees of freedom. This leg has had two mates associated with it. 
It had a concentric mate, which will prevent the leg from moving in the X or Z directions. And it has also this coincident mate on the top, which is going to prevent it from moving in the Y direction. These mates also are going to prevent the leg from rotating about the X axis or about the Z axis. So the only thing that's left is for that leg to rotate about the Y axis, and that's what it's doing right here. So all parts start out by default with six open degrees of freedom. That's three translation and three rotation. And slowly, by adding mates, you can constrain these parts so they have no more open degrees of freedom. When a part has no more open degrees of freedom, it just can't move. So all we have to do now is prevent this leg from rotating. So I'm going to grab this flat face at the bottom of the fork leg. And then in the assembly, I'm going to find the correct plane. In this case, it'll be the right plane. And SolidWorks is going to give us an error here because it thinks we're overdefining the assembly. By default, it's trying to give us a coincident mate. That's what this error message is saying. But if we switch this to a parallel mate, then the error goes away and everything's good. And now if we take a look at the fork leg, the fork leg is now fully defined as well. You can see the minus in front of the other parts. That means these other parts are all free to move and rotate. But the fork leg is fixed in space because the fork leg was attached to the tree and the tree is attached to the ground. Okay, now we need another fork tree. So I'm going to hold down the control key and just drag another one of those. We also need another fork leg. So we're going to drag another one of those. So let's add some mates here quickly. I'll open the mate command, select the inside of the hole, the outside of the leg, right click to accept, outside of the leg, the inside of the hole, right click to accept, move this out of the way, inside the hole, outside the leg, right click to accept, and now I'm going to make a mate that SolidWorks is going to guess wrong. I'm going to select on the flat face here, rotate around, and select the flat face here. SolidWorks is guessing coincident. I'm going to use a distance mate instead, and we'll make this 8 inches. All right, that's good. Let's again zoom in here, top face here, top face here. SolidWorks guesses coincident, and that's correct, so we hit the right mouse button. And finally, we need to get this fork leg spun around, so let's do that. Just pre-assemble it to some extent. If you don't pre-assemble it, you're going to have to tell SolidWorks to flip the mate around. So you've got to do that job one way or another. Select that flat face and this flat face. And we don't want them to be coincident, which is what SolidWorks is trying to give us. We'll just tell it we want them to be parallel. And that's the mating scheme for the fork legs and the tree. And we'll have to continue this mating scheme in the next video.